So, hello, Sugaba. So after a talk from Tobias, it's time to have a talk from another Tobias. So I'm going to talk today about um, how we developed in around about two years, three different firmwares to enable powering railway infrastructures. And I begin a little bit with what do you already have? So we uh, at Conox CMBH, we already had a device which we put on the sleeper. And the sleeper is basically a thing made of concrete and the train passes over, it moves and you measure the movement and based on the movement measurement, you can say how good is it or not. And this device was exploration, yeah, getting exploration data, getting insights and make our customers happy. Customers are being, for example, German network and whatever. So, And it is um, everything written in a bare metal way, which it's very difficult to maintain if you have new ideas, new features, even if you want to put something new on side it, it's got more difficult with every feature we added because yeah, you know how it is, you have a little bit here, a little bit there, and most of the code we had to maintain ourselves. And you can see, basically, we only had like small parts, which we are like common used. We are quite a few developers. Also now we are three female developer. When we started, it was just me, so <laughs> it got worse. And this was why we decided in the future, okay, let's don't do it this. And the future we are thinking about is actually we want to build like a whole network. We want to have more sensors, more data, because the more data you're having, the more insights you can generate, because currently you just have exploration data on a sleeper. You only have a small use cases, but from the company side, we want to provide based on a lot of sensors and diffusion and generate much more insights to, you know, have better predictive maintenance for our network as a customer to say, where's the problem where the blade is not working, the switch is not working because of this. And when we said, okay, how can we build it? And when we looked into Sapphire and it says, hey, cool, I look into it and there's already, we heard today, 200 centers supported. So a lot of support of hate hardware. It is open source, other than the Linux Foundation means it's quite good maintained because just being open source, you know, doesn't mean it's going to be maintained a long time. How many projects exist which are not used by anymore by anyone or stop being maintained and when you have to become a maintainer yourself. And also more and more hardware vendors are backing it. I don't know, since we started using it in this two years, I think four or five more like big companies joined it. And um, generally, the documentation is quite good compared to a lot of the other projects that worked on it. Um, the samples makes it very easy to start something. And there is a great community in Discord and other things when you have um, questions and reply to it. And a lot of things are supported out of the box, sometimes better, sometimes less good, but you get something running very fast. And this is already quite nice, right? Who doesn't like to have a blinking LED on the desk? And what did we build in the end? Yeah, currently this is the first iteration. So, that's, so we built a big gray box, which is our gateway. We just used um, LTMS backend because it's quite often that the range on the tracks is quite bad. And we saw it already quite a lot of our old um, hardware, but the normal LTE network is not available, especially in Germany. Um, but LTM range is better. And for now we used Bluetooth as a communication because we're still collecting a lot of data. And when we have in this example, you know, a train coming over it and we wanted to have just the acceleration data so we can build when later models to make the data smaller. When we have smaller data, we can do different protocols. And while you're asking, hey, I only see three devices, why three firmwares? But yeah, we built one for 91, which is the LTM one, when we're 52. And then we have the 52 on the other side on the sensor, so nothing too complex in the end. And there's a lot of Sapphire features which makes it a lot easier to build with things. I love that, CBUS. CBUS made so many ideas much easier in the end. It's like, for me, it's like a Swiss knife because you can decouple things very greatly when we have, for example, the thing when we think about exchanging in the future, the network protocol, we can just basically, we have one channel defined, remove one, add another one, or the sensor you can exchange. Not everyone thinks the same way, but I love it. And we used it even in a base to communicate from one microcontroller to another. I already saw from, I talked with Rodriguez, uh, who was maintaining CBUS, so it's probably something similar will come into the upstream. We built our own self solution, but basically we have a CBUS communication channel we put what the channel is and the meshes um, in a nano PB as in a protobuf file and moved it from one 
microcontroller to another one. And this is especially when we collected the data from you know, the Bluetooth network and then we wanted to forward it into the network into RBS. Yeah. So what you can see, so the idea was when you have something on a Bluetooth channel, this goes to a network channel, we do something with node because we decide if it's node from us or what, and then we forward this message and this message which is forwarded, then we just send you know, to RBS. It's nothing too magically, it's just move data from A to C. And what it will allow in the future, when we say, for example, now we have less data, we don't need Pluto for want to go for longer range, we could exchange this maybe for LoRa or some other protocol. Should work theoretically much easier and we should not need two years for the next firmware. Um, a lot of things I also love personally is the work use because you don't need to care too much about threads. And for everything which is kind of a once and for forget, fire forget thing, we just use the work queue, very nice. Um, what we learned quite last, so as the system work queue is used by the system, do the name, don't put long working items on it. If you do it, things can get messy, so yeah. Um, also, I quite liked that there actually was a state machine framework already existing, which made a lot of things easier, especially we used it for this our handling, how we handled the Bluetooth states as we use periodic ultrasound responses, just to keep basically the sensor more in a like listening mode most of the time. And it works quite nice. It supports a theoretical state machine, which makes it also easier if you're being, being say, I say a state where I know I have a somewhere where I can talk to, do I don't know where I can talk to. And yeah, it also saves energy and time because I don't know how many of you did implement a state machine framework in the past. It's not that complex, but it takes time and you always miss something. And we, also I personally loved, especially for reproducible builds, the MES manifests and the Sapphire modules because you can just put it in, say which version it is, whatever, blah, blah, and you have a continuous integration system. It pulls it, it gets all the models like we are, and you can build ideally the same build again. Um, yeah, as we quite often mentioned, the shell helps for debugging very nice and easily, MCU boot, and device tree, which makes it very nice to replace hardware in the end. I think it's all quite basic things, but it's very nice that they exist in just a common way. Half of the things I developed like three times myself differently, so I hope I don't have to do it again. Um, for people who are developing, as so we use in our use case now, mostly Nordic, so we're basing in a Nordic F um, SDK, which is a bit differently when it's done as Sapphire, but common enough. Um, and then we created our own chat library, which we pull as a model. So the idea is that most of our things we are reusing, we want to use in the chat library. And then we using for all the exchanging from our device to a backend team, like a protobuf protocol. So basically we define a protocol on the protobuf and then all the backend integration, which just like data analysis and whatever, we just know this format and we don't have to develop a big API around it. And everything, yeah, you see, basically it saves a lot of code because you see this was our old project, lots of lines we had to maintain, and this time we see the firmware, the business logic itself is small, and we hope it stays the small, and in the future it will be much faster to develop new things, as we don't have to write, you know, shared library at least as much again. And very basic, everything is running in a CI, and we push, we have like the standard checks running, then we run currently most of our tests in a hard in a loop, I'm thinking about also we think about moving it more into a software in a loop test so we don't use as much hardware anymore as the POSIX support is quite nice but I talked with some guys and let's see how it works out. Um, a few points which we learned when you migrate from one Zephyr version to another or an ever read your migration guide and do, don't do big steps when I don't know from 3 to 1 to 3.7 because a lot of things are changing and it yeah, can get also again messy. Um, if you build low power application, check the key config and measure the consumption regularly because it can be you enable a feature and your power consumption goes up three, four milliamps and you don't know why and maybe it's just a feature enabled for you. Yeah. And if you know, okay, it was only the small change and when my um, commit, you know what it was. And also keep yourself updated with the newsletter because there's a lot of things always coming in and Maybe you have an idea of what you need, but it's already part of the upstream. So I think we don't have time for questions, but you can talk with me at the coffee break.